This episode of the We Like Shooting Show is brought to you by Swamp Fox Optics, Medical Gear Outfitters, Blue Elf, Fact of Firearms, Franklin Armory, True Shot Gun Club, and Nutrient Survival. Woo. Welcome to the We Like Shooting Show, episode 420, Blaze It. Tonight we're going to talk about the Krieg Schlinga night vision gear discussion, Strike Industries news and more, and also Jeremy promised us a story about his day. Our cast tonight, Jeremy Paz, Derek, we got Savage Lenar checking in from Washington, the Machine Gun Moses, Aaron Krieger's here, Nick's dead, my name is Sean Aaron, welcome to the show. Someday, someday Nick's actually going to be dead and you're all going to be like, oh, you're going to feel bad. No, they Nick's won't. Nick's dead, long live Nick. <laughs> I don't know, Nick. It's it's the weirdest thing ever, Nick. You okay there, Jeremy? Okay, why don't you no. mute it while you do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. I hit stop camera instead of mute. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Because then we, we like was wrestling you. over there. <laughs> really? Really savage? <laughs> this is a podcast, you sons of bitches. <laughs> this is about sound. Oh, look at that. Look at Savage. Doing the right thing. Just want to be re- same as you guys. <laughs> Conformity. Oh boy. Uh, let me pick some noises to play, and then we'll get right into the show. And stick around if you want to hear about Jeremy's day. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Who do you want to talk about first? Well, I would talk about being able to see into the future, Sean. I want to talk about Swamp Fox Optics. I would like to hear how that relates to seeing into the future. Well, uh, as the light travels to your eye, what you see is actually something that uh, actually you're looking into the past. Into the past, yeah. Yeah, my bad. You're actually looking into the past of something that's already happened by the time your eye actually sees it, especially from a distance. Did you know by the time you see the light from a star, the star is already dead? And well, I'm, that, I mean, that, that depends. All, yeah, not all stars, but uh, some of them, yes. Some of those stars do not exist anymore that we actually see now. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were just doing fake science. No, 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 no. What do you think this is? A, a vaccine? <laughs> yeah, oh, is, my this is not fucking the, God. This may be a party, but it's not the Democratic Party, Sean. Oh, <laughs> you know, party like a communist party. Uh, As a com- uh, uh, so Swan Fox Optics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, so, uh, I'm going to talk I mean, about them in gear chat. Let's talk about someone else. All right. Well, let, let's uh, let's talk about Medical Gear Outfitters, Sean. Don't want to talk about them right now. Okay. <laughs> Aaron's like, you're flipping the script on me. You're flipping yeah. the fuck is True Shot Gun Club. That's oh, let's what talk, I want to talk about. Let's talk about True Shot Gun Club, Sean. Guys. You might not recognize that name. It's a brand new name. You guys didn't even know it. In fact, I saw when you were reading it, Aaron, you got a little bit confused. Well, I was surprised to see them on board. This is great. I know True Shot Gun Club. I, I'm very familiar with them. Yeah. I, yeah. I do li- like their products. No fucking idea. Well, obviously, or how to use a mic. <laughs> he knows how to use it. It's picking up sound there. It's just broken. <laughs> I think I broke another arm thing. Gorilla hands over there. Uh, yeah, True Shot Gun Club. So what do they do? They sell ammunition. They sell a lot of ammunition. Uh, I actually mentioned this to Chris Aronson from JCAA the other night. I was like, we've never had another ammo sponsor uh, since you guys because you were like the best. And honestly... Like signing anyone else just felt like treachery, you know. Do you, I, I talked to you about that, right, Aaron? You did. We we spoke at, at length. Yeah. So True Shot actually, one of our buddies uh, went over there and is working there, and and said that he actually loves the company, and that's when I started thinking about this might be a great idea because they sell ammunition from all different brands and, and all kinds of stuff, and they're really making a lot of moves. They've got a bunch of deals that I'm constantly seeing all over the place, which is a good thing. And, uh, our, our good buddy, Kurt works there and, uh, runs a lot of the, the stuff that you'll see online and out there, which 
I think is actually amazing because, you know, we, we love him. We worked him, with him in another company that, uh, that advertises with us and it was just kind of a match made. So not only are they advertised the official ammo sponsor of we like shooting, but they're also the official ammo sponsor of the RV tour, which is even more awesome. Aaron, you okay? You look a little confused. Oh, I just, I was reading a news article, a headline to a news article. Henry Carvel says he's changing up uh, Geralt for the Witcher season two. I mean, like, what, what, how's he going to change him up is what I want to know. I'm, you're killing me right now. Sorry. You're very engaged. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> but, I, I, <laughs> now you, say, you know what? You sound like my wife. God damn it. Yeah. Fucking like, turn off that other monitor. All right. It's gone. It's gone. I, I you're you're going to be here this weekend. I'll slap you in the mouth. Oh, dude. And we're going on a road trip. We're yeah. road tripping this weekend. We are. we are. So anyway, uh, True Shot Gun Club, not only just the ammo sponsor for WLS, the official ammo provider for WLS, but also what? the for So any training that we're going to do, like any of that stuff, is all brought to you ammunition-wise by True Shot Gun Club. You can find them at True Shot Gun Club. We will work on... <laughs> I'm looking this up now. Yeah, <laughs> they're pretty badass, and uh, definitely take a look at them. And we'll we'll work on getting coupon codes, and we'll be posting links and and all that stuff. In fact, uh, today I was looking at some two two three over there, and while the prices are still not what we saw previously, I was looking right around fifty cents for brass, which is actually pretty great. So, trueshotgunclub.com, go check them out. Let's do this. Eric from Nutrient Survival said, "WTF, Aaron? Just like in our meetings, <laughs> it's, you know, it's it's just uh, hard to stay engaged when we live in a society that's constantly feeding us pictures and information." I'm not looking at my phone the whole time. It, all right, so like, <laughs> as you look at your phone, <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. So today, uh, you know, I, I drive my kids around a lot, but today I uh, I installed our new our new one of our new uh, chat features for our our our, our group. The uh, the Patreon group or the the cult group Telegram, and basically, and uh, like I'm getting messages constantly, or messages appearing constantly. Plus, uh, all of our other all, uh, other social medias sending in messages constantly. Plus, I'm having conversations with Sean, with my my buddy Alex, with other people out there in the industry. And I'm thinking, this is what Sean does, and he's able to. And I'm going crazy, like I'm losing my mind trying to just keep up with it. Because somebody asked me, like my I'm, people working on my house, they're asking me questions, so I've got to feedback i'm trying to refinance my house i'm working with those people i'm doing all these different things and i'm just like what the hell how does sean do this man how does he god because that's what you i see you on your phone a lot but you're able to, to juggle everything and i'm just amazed uh it's because i basically ignore everything that doesn't directly relate to wls like honestly the the discord and facebook and me we like i barely look at them and I, I hate that but there's just too much going on and I also realize it's my fault for adding WLS to all these different platforms. But the problem is, is like we're constantly getting screwed over by all these other platforms and we're constantly trying to come up with, you know, alternatives. So I'm just basically casting a wide net and then I'll figure out where the people are interacting and where they're doing the most. And that's what I'll actually focus on eventually. The, the trick on Facebook is to only be on there two days before you catch another 30 day ban. Ask me how I know. <laughs> story of my fucking life. Actually. Speaking of speaking of stories, I, I heard uh, Jeremy might have well, one for us. We're gonna we're gonna do that after gear chat, which I guess okay. we'll just do right now. Oh man, I already played this one. Mm, I'm going home. Fuck my Wait. Home. Already home. Did you just say suck my hole? I said fuck my whole life. <laughs> oh, I'm like what? Good lord. Uh Aaron, speaking of that. It was really weird because there was a pause after hole. You were just like, fuck my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> weird. Uh Aaron, tell us about the Kriegerschlinger. The 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 Kriegsklinger. The 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 link doesn't actually work, which sucks. Really? Yeah. Oh, you know what? It works for me. So what I will do is uh I will share my screen. How okay. does that sound? Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. All right. Uh share screen. Yeah, but we're also on Signal, Telegram. Actually, DealBro works specifically in Telegram, and DealBro is absolutely killing it lately. Okay, Kriegsling. Let's see if I can. Uh, it won't like we make the, the. There we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, this is the noble knife design. Chop yes. Oh yeah, look at that thing. Look at this thing. It's a, it's it's his chopper design. I'm calling it the the Kriegsklinger. 
Oh, I see. Which is German, which uh, is translates into Warblade. It's just listen. He did, the the finish on that is amazing. He's uh he's embedded a uh, WLS in the mine. Now this one looks like it's, is this one your Sean? This is mine. Him? It's got the the pirate Cthulhu, uh, the pirate gun Thulu. Gotcha. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Yeah, he asked me which one I wanted. What I want the gun or did I want the the WLS monogram? I went with the WLS monogram. Yeah. Um, but they are just the finish that he's doing on these is amazing. Uh, this it's got some G10 grips on there which are not completed yet. Um, he's going to scale them out a little bit, so or scallop them a little bit, so it has better grip. Um, Dude, yeah. I I hope that it's called the Kriegslinger. That that's amazing. I 100% hope that's what he calls it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm pushing it. But uh, let me, uh, you know what? Let me uh, switch accounts here and show you what he sent me. You know what you should have called it? What's that? The Zuka Crankheit, which means it's German. Figure it out. You okay, want this on. on the screen when you're clicking all yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping my. Oh, the wrong one. Uh, okay. I was like, <laughs> this is very risky. <laughs> yeah, I, I just uh, like I don't. Oh, you know, what? he was the first one in there. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up mine here. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna share the screen. Okay, Aaron's yeah, okay. sharing the screen, and Maybe. we should do a better job of explaining what we're looking at. So this yes. is a uh, chopper as well. Yep, and here we go. Okay, we're watching the chopper. So oh, you can see the. You yeah. Yeah. Wow. Looks amazing. That yeah. thing is beefy. Holy shit. Oh, dude. Yeah. They're enormous. This is actually going to be my meat knife. Uh, That's a gorgeous. Holy shit. Because all knives are mission specific. You got your meat knife. You've got like your killing knife. You've got your poop knife. You got like all the different ones. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so yes noble knife design uh is making in my opinion like the coolest stuff that i see in fact okay i've only bought two knives in the last i don't know 10 years that were um not you know ten dollar knives and i bought a couple from pro knife thrower because i want throwing knives and every other knife that i've bought is from noble knife design and, and like i'm like ordering stuff constantly like they're amazing man so i normally don't show things that i bought to my wife because uh you know it's like i don't want to know that where, where the money goes prostitutes <laughs> jewelry for your girlfriend but i'm like you gotta see this knife and she's like oh it's beautiful she's like what would you use it for i'm like oh it's a survival knife it's this it's the knife that you know this is the knife you use when you need to, to put things down Dude, mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 this thing will will cleave. I, I I'd, I'd like to have something stabby if I'm gonna be <laughs> fighting. Oh, I mean, I, it's probably heavy, you yeah. know, and it, so it's got some heft to it. But I mean, you can gash somebody. But I mean, you do kind of want to. The the problem with chopping is, unless you have something like a broadsword or an axe or a um, like something with a lot of heft Wait, behind yeah. it. Um, like especially a knife, it's if you slash, it's just a flesh wound, and the odds of getting it through a bone are slim to none. Yeah, you so, won't stab me. You oh, might thing. get arterial, maybe, but it's a lot better if you use something that is longer than three inches that can pierce the sternum uh, or the throat if you want like actual like quick death. Yeah, but but that has a lot of uses. I mean, for sure cutting meat i mean yeah well yeah because i've been smoking a lot of meat so i'm like literally i'm going to use that thing to cut the meat and it's just amazingly beautiful and so functional and i don't know i wish like, i wish i had more reason to use my meat cleaver well so he's also making me a kukri right now mm, uh, yeah maybe i have a kukri now. Yeah, so it's going to be a Noble Knife Design Kukri as well. I think he sent me a message earlier about the axe, which I have not replied to yet because it's been... The tomahawk a, or the axe? Uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever one he's working on right now. Hopefully, I didn't miss out. Because, yes, I, I'm absolutely in. So, anyway, yes. Noble Knife Design, basically. Uh, the <laughs> the, uh, the, Klinger. Uh, the official knife <laughs> provider to WLS, it seems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's listen. so fucking cool. I mean, I, I I bought a lot of knives in my time, like you know, like here and there. Like the, maybe the most I've ever spent was like sixty bucks, but this one was well more than that and well mm -hmm. worth it. Yeah. No, I mean they're they're yeah they're awesome. It is, yeah, I'm, like I literally I, have I, my heron on my belt right now. Zucker Crankheit. <laughs> I fear I fear these names that you come up with, Jeremy, because I know yeah. they're just detrimental to to, to me personally. No, I didn't come up with it. It's a fucking German word. 
Right. It, made, yeah. it made sugar sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Sugar that's a good, that's a good show name right there. Sugar. Writing it down right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Holy shit, that's awesome. Uh, Savage, uh, what do you, you have to talk about? Oh, well, um, you know how I have a sure kind of fascination with Strike Industries. I like I like their design stuff, though a little bit, you know, they can go a little bit overboard. You know, I can admit that. Uh, <laughs> but but they have nice design cues. They also make some cool stuff. I, I, I admit that. They do. I, I love their dust covers. I think they have phenomenal dust covers. Um, but uh, so they have this new uh, Psy Opto Scouter. And it's their their uh, budget level, budget entry level uh, red dot uh, scope here. So uh, it's coming out at a, well, I don't know if it's a street price or retail price of uh, 249 So that's kind of, you know, middle of the road. Um, it, let's see here. Hold, they hold have, on. What, what road are you driving on? Because I, I, uh, for, for, for budget. No, no, no. You know, no, red dots. No. I, I did. I listen, I'm not here to shit on you, but like hollow sun has a huge line of red dots that are under like under $200. Um, yeah, I would say it's kind of pricey, but I mean, the Sig Romeo is like maybe the same price. The Sig Romeo and the hollow sun, uh, there's a, the Romeo five and the hollow sun are about the same price. Uh, right. they start going up when you have like, uh, the solar panels and shit like that and some of the yeah. different styles but that is essentially a sig romeo 5 and a hollow sun counterpart and it's i don't know 60 dollars more so okay having said that savage continue on to talk about your romeo 5 i mean <laughs> uh your psyopto <laughs> uh, oh so you I said overpriced romeo 5 so <laughs> you mispronounced that so uh, they said it's, it's got a, a one-piece site housing and uh, absolute site high mounting base are both CNC machined out of 6061 uh, T6 aluminum. Uh, it's got a collimate, co collimated wedge lens. I have no idea what that means, but a collimated wedge lens with multi-layer co coating uh, for clarity, I suppose. And then it oh. comes with... Sorry, a, collim a collimator is actually a device used to... Fa uh, basically it's used to um simulate skin, skin parsnips no it's used to simulate <laughs> like a hundred yards so you can basically they use collimators for optics and things so you can basically get a rough zero and it's a lens system that when you mount your optic to it you look down into the collimator and it basically looks like it's a hundred yards so you, then you can set your zero and you're you should be zeroed at a hundred yards so i don't understand what collimated lenses means so clearly there's some kind of weird geometry thing that that's referred to yeah uh so then they say they have a battery housing designed by psyopto which provides a uh, protection for the single uh 2032 uh battery lithium ion battery it has a two-year battery life uh on the number six of 11 brightness settings uh it says it's not night vision compatible uh it uses the aimpoint t1 t2 uh, t2 footprint and comes with a 1913 mount so i think uh you know, as of right now, uh, it's looking like, you know, our, uh, you know, it's it's not quite as good as some of the the stuff that, you know, other companies are putting out. It does have cool design wow. cues. It's it's a little what? bit more expensive. It's a weird battery mount. Like so, four fucking screws and like, like, dude, how much work do you want me to do to take a fucking battery out? Like, what happened to just like a cap? Yeah, it's a 2032. I do like that their their mount it's skeletonized. I mean, all well, strike industry. So yeah, I mean, but I'm, I'm a lot I, of people paying good money for that stuff. How about yeah. they? Uh, also, that is not what red dots look like when you look at them. Uh, it is if you have astigmatism. No, <laughs> that but, um, is a perfect circle. That is not what red dots look like. So, Sean, if you, uh, I actually have showing something on my screen. If you want to pop over there real quick. Yeah. No, not really. So these are your prices for some red dots. You can get the Crossfire uh, Vorte from Vortex for one forty nine, mm -hmm. hundred dollars less than that. Yeah, you're uh, right. One from Hollow Sun for one seventy four. Another one from Hollow Sun for the exact same price of two forty nine. Yeah, but that uh, one's got solar panel. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, Hollow Sun has some some better offerings, and and Vortex has better. Swamp Fox definitely has better offerings. Is that a um, fucking Seymour? We're down here. No. Oh. Yeah, Seymour on the left. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
for three hundred fifty nine dollars. By the Ooh, way, man, are, what are, are those worth it? Like I've seen those and they look kind of interesting, but I'm like, damn, that's that's a lot. Uh, that's what comes with the uh, CZ Checkmate is the Seymour site. Um, they were really cool back in the day. No, they are not the end all <laughs> be all anymore. But back in the day. That's what a lot of your, you know, fucking higher end guys were actually shooting was those Seymour sites. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, Zach H says collimating just refers to making light rays more, more parallel, like the opposite of a refracting lens. Okay. Thank you, Zach. So, so what I'm, I'm guessing is a, a lot of lenses, you know, curve the light a little bit. <laughs> so maybe it's the way it's set up. It straight, straightens it out to make it more clear. I guess. So there's less distortion probably around the edges. That would be my guess. I guess, yeah, I guess so. Or maybe, uh, like, maybe it looks brighter because the, I, honestly, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Yep. I don't know what I'm talking about. Just throwing shit out there in the dark. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting to see this, but we're seeing this a lot, actually. I think, I think we're it's seeing like, a lot of companies what? put out optic lines, like Crimson Trace now is hitting their optics line very hard. It's uh, the, so it's I, the Shield Plus and Ruger Max 9 of the comp of the carry gun world. Like, Cool story, bro. You're five years too late. Fuck off. I think what people are seeing is that they can get these optics from overseas pretty quickly, uh, pretty easily, not put a whole lot of development time into them, put their brand on them and sell them. Yeah, I mean, it's probably true. No, I mean, it is like I, I, I kind of phrased that like a question, but really it was a statement. It's what a lot of people are doing. Um, but I mean, it's good for the consumer, right? Lots of different options. I mean, okay. I'm happy that the options aren't a true glow <laughs> and a fucking Trigicon. Like, cause really eight years ago, like when I first opened my store, those were your fucking options. It yeah. was a $70 true glow, which like they fucking work, but like, don't like, don't jar the gun too badly. Yeah. They'll, and they'll then break. fucking trigicon and eotex like it was either 70 bucks or 800 bucks there was no good in between my uh, first red dot really till the hollow suns and the romeos came out my, my yeah. first one was a uh, nc star oh yeah mine was too actually <laughs> i still have pictures of it one <laughs> the other day oh bye savage yeah i guess he hated that so much that he left yeah he's like okay bye probably in a diabetic coma <laughs> uh, uh, that would be aaron right uh no I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. It just, just Aaron hacked you so that he could be up in the top right corner. That's there exactly what I was trying to do. <laughs> Zach C, angry Jeremy voice. Just use open sights. Rah, 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 out to 800 meters. Burp, rah, rah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could. <laughs> also, he fucking called that shit. Okay. So I finally, for now, have fully done out my, my, night fire kit i know i've been talking about it for a long time so tonight i actually just wanted to kind of go over i finally got the last piece which was a pistol ir light so i kind of wanted to go over all the different stuff and talk about some of the choices that i had made let me just go ahead and uh, push the camera out just a little bit and then we will get started so this is basically for night vision shooting or shooting oh god everything's falling shooting under night vision and uh, what I've really realized is that it's kind of expensive, but I've tried to do it. I've tried to do it in such a way that it's like affordable and approachable for just anyone who wants to get out there and do it. And I know like night vision is, uh, or even shooting at night, uh, just doing night fire stuff is one of those things that like some people just don't have the option to do whatsoever right like they don't they can't go to a range at night just because it's not available but there's lots of classes out there i think it's gaining a lot in popularity and we're seeing a lot of different stuff so i just kind of wanted to go through the choices that i made and why i made them and a lot of these choices are going to be based on cost and i am not an expert here i guarantee that i will find some of these things that absolutely don't work and end up having to replace them which is painful because the stuff's expensive but that's actually how it's going to go. So what I've actually picked for the light on my rifle is the Surefire Scout light. So it's got a white light. It's got an IR light. And it all basically all you do is twist the head and it's clearly marked and it does have a little detent. So it kind of stops in place. 
And uh, I've got that going right there. It turns out that this one is about 1,000 lumens and equals about 11,000 candela on the white light. Uh, I have used it and it does work pretty well. It also has this dual switch. This dual switch here actually has one control that goes out to the flashlight and controls either white or IR, depending on which one you have set up. And then the back switch goes to my laser, aim laser aiming device. The Surefire Scout light, which does white light and IR, which is important to me because I want to be able to use both. If I'm doing a night fire class with flashlights, I want to be able with white flashlights. I want to be able to do that. If I'm doing a night fire class with night vision, I also want to be able to do that. So I had to choose some things that did both. And I also had to do it on a budget. Now, this light's 500 bucks at Brownells. And that's pricey. That's like, that's a lot of money. So, but it does do both. It did come with the switch. It did come with the mount for the switch, uh, which is an additional 200 bucks if you just buy the light actually. Um, that takes me to my laser aiming device on the rifle, which is going to be a D ball. I two. this has both visible and infrared lasers, and you can select both of them. It also has high power modes. The high power modes are actually, um, activated by removing some screws. They, they put little screws in it. So you can't activate the high power until you're damn good and ready and, and want to, I have the screws in right now because most of the time I'm not using high power lasers. Uh, when I'm at the range, I'm just using low power, but I did want the option. It is an easy switch on the back and it does have just one switch up here that you can activate with your thumb. But since I got the, the dual switch with my surefire light, the back button actually does, uh, activate and deactivate the laser. And it's all momentary, uh, on these switches as well, which is actually really nice. So that is for my rifle for the optic. I did go with an arrowhead one to 10 with an offset mount. This one right now is actually a Kingslayer. I'm going to throw a Liberty on there or a justice. One of those two, um, the arrowhead does have two night vision settings, meaning that I can get the light up there, look through it and see it under night vision. The problem with that is practically, it just doesn't really work. When I put my head up there, because I have the night vision on my right eye, I basically would have to hold the rifle out a couple inches to be able to see through the reticle, which is why I have the laser aiming devices. Uh, I just think it's kind of mandatory on this. It is nice that it has a night vision setting, but at the same time, practically I can't use it. The red dot is only just a red dot. So yes, it would be visible to other people at night, but the great thing is, is since it's offset a little bit, I can raise it up and look through it. But again, that's all kind of a moot point because I do have the D-Ball I2 uh, laser and I, I can see the laser on whatever, wherever I point the gun, the laser goes on that target and then I can fire for effect. Uh, what do you, you guys have any thoughts on those choices? Uh, I'm just curious about the the price overall. You said it's a budget, <laughs> you did it on a budget, but what was your budget? <laughs> so <laughs> this is, keep in mind, this is night vision budget. Like this it is not a cheap game. So that light and that switch are about four ninety nine. I think you can get the light for about three hundred bucks, and then the switch, if you want the dual switch, is going to be another hundred and seventy nine bucks with the mount and everything. But you can get the whole package for about five hundred. The D Ball I two is going to be about nine hundred and thirty four dollars on Brownells. It was probably fourteen hundred right now. Yeah, and that's just for my rifle. I mean, that's not even counting the rifle. Oh so, yeah, yeah. No. The other, <laughs> other, other question: How much does all that weigh? The whole package. So this thing, th this rifle's heavy. Uh, I, my guess is about 10 pounds. Ooh. Is that a pistol or is that a rifle? It's an SBR. It's okay. a re registered SBR. And okay. okay, like I've been collecting this stuff for like two years, just trying to get it uh, in for review, trying to get it uh, like buying. I have had to buy. So here's another thing. Uh, Night vision companies and companies that make IR stuff, they don't give a fuck about content creators because they don't need them like they make it for the military they sell some to civilians when they have it and they just literally do not care so again five hundred dollars for this about nine hundred and thirty four dollars for the d-ball laser aiming device and then of course the optics cost extra on that but you can use whatever optics you want because I, I honestly if you're wearing any kind of night vision a monocular or dual tube or anything like you it's really hard to look down the sights so that so, brings me to my pistol. Oh, go ahead. 
Oh no, so we're we're I mean that gun is well over like four grand with uh, everything on there. Uh yeah, I mean it's a it's actually a really nice gun already. Um and then I think just the just the optics are gonna be about seven hundred because I have the hostile engagement mounts, so I can do the forty five degree offset red dot, which I really like. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, that that it's a and it's got an Aklas Defense five five six full auto can on it. Um so yeah, it's a pricey gun. But just just the night vision stuff, I I'd say is about uh, what fifteen hundred bucks. Jeez, nice. Okay, moving okay. on. So then pistol. I was like, I want a pistol light with a laser because honestly, shooting laser under night vision is awesome. Which kind of makes me think that shooting laser without night vision might also be awesome. Like, never mind the tactical stuff, but I enjoy it so much in the dark. Maybe maybe I've been. A little bitch about sh- lasers in in the daytime or no. you know, visible lasers. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna revisit just to kind of see how I feel. So what I ended up going with, uh, I recently uh, hooked up with Streamlight, and they actually have the TLR VIR2, which is both a white light, but also on the bottom it has a switch to go to IR, which has. I wonder if you can see it in the camera. Nope. It has an. Oh yeah, you can actually see the laser in the camera. So it has an IR illuminator, uh, but it also has an IR laser on it. So once you flip that switch, it does the illuminator and the laser at the same time. They work together. There's no independent function for them. It's either white light or IR laser and illuminator at the same time. Uh, so, that's all you can get. So what that gun needs, first of all, I have the TLR2 with the light and laser, not the IR illuminator. And that was like like 300, 300 and some dollars for that one. How much is that one? This one's about 360 bucks. Okay. Yeah. And the one, the thing I love about this is it fits all my holsters cause it's the TLR one footprint and TLR one is like uh, probably my favorite pistol light. The one that I use the most uh-huh. and it does again, have the IR laser and the IR illuminator with a pretty quick and easy switch, but it's recessed. So you probably won't bump it. Uh, is it, is it a t- t- trigger t- toggle for the light? It's the same teeter totter toggle that yep. the TLR, uh, which is which is great because you can use it with your thumb if you're depending on your grip. You can no, that, that's how you're supposed to activate them. Yeah, or or I mean, you know, if you just want to set it up, you can also use a finger off the when it's off the trigger. Yeah, I mean, so on the right hand side, it's always on. On the left hand side, it's momentary. So also, um, my question: what well, what you need is a suppressor on that. I mean, basically, if you're if you're shooting in the night, you should be quiet. I hate suppressed pistols suppressed handguns like, really just because yeah. of the weight and so- length uh i just don't like them they're unwieldy they're not that fun i mean i like shooting suppressed but i don't like shooting suppressed handguns unless it's a ar pistol or the like or you know just uh one of those things i i like you can't put it in a holster like drawing becomes funky i just don't like them so it is what it is it's got a cube compensator on it from cgs group i've never had luck with any of those square comps they always like just rotate off it it does it's it's okay at best yeah i mean they fl- they look nice they're all flush fit you know on the sides and everything it looks pretty but i don't those set screws just i don't care how deep you dig them into that your 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 um your barrel is they just fucking never sit yeah now let's talk about now now we're getting into the expensive stuff which i know is really uh, so i also did actually splurge and get the scout light for my mp5 uh uh, you know i'll talk about that uh this is actually a you know i'll talk about that in a minute because i wanted to talk about something else with that so now let's talk about okay we've got all the lasers and the ir lights and everything uh how do you use that so what i ended up going with was a buddy of mine uh helped me collect parts over almost two years and actually get all the parts and then he assembled for me the pvs 14 so i have a i think it's what gen 3 green pvs 14 and i mean i love it like it it works fantastic they're really expensive they're like what three grand something like that so yeah around that yeah so they're super super expensive but that is an option i actually run a rhino mount that i got directly from a a, the sticker still on it 45 bucks from an army uh, surplus store and this is actually the the military version um, is kind of beat up, but it absolutely does work. And then I've got the J arm 
on my PVS 14, which is like another 25 bucks, 30 bucks from the military surplus store. I've had to buy a couple of them because they wore out. That's what you get when you're buying some older stuff. But yeah, PVS 14, the watcher just said it's budget compared to dual tubes or quads. Yeah, without question. Like PVS 14, this is about the poorest night vision that you can get, but that's what I got and I'm 100% comfortable with. Wait, is it Psionics the poorest you could get? Mm. This is the... Psionics is, in my opinion, a different class, and I'm actually going to talk about them in just a second. I actually do put it on a Hardhead Veterans Ballistic Helmet. Uh, this is this one is level 3A, I believe. Uh, I also did get a bump helmet. So they sent out the Ballistic Helmet. I bought a bump helmet. The bump helmet is 200 bucks, and it has all the mounts and everything that you'll need to put any kind of night vision on it. Then hearing protection. I wasn't going to go out and spend a thousand bucks on ear pro for the Peltor contacts or whatever they're called because holy crap, this all gets so expensive. So I actually ended up bastardizing a set of Howard lights and putting them on the hardhead veterans mounts. And then I found out that they suck more than anything has ever sucked before. Mm -hmm. So I did a bunch of research and started looking around and the ops core, uh, what are they called? The, I think rack mount is, this arm that basically attaches to the hardhead veterans m lock but it doesn't attach directly you also have to buy a 35 dollar adapter that goes onto that and then you have to buy the axle uh, sorry the axle rack link uh, these are the ops core amp arms and then the rack link is the part that connects to the hearing pro the rack link is 75 dollars the the uh, ops core amp arms are a hundred dollars and then i've also got the uh, noise fighters, sight lines, and uh, heat sink protection on this one as well. But after spending hundreds of dollars on different mounting systems, this one is uh, actually the one that I'm sticking with, and it's amazing, and I absolutely love it. But then you put night vision on the front of it, and you realize, okay, I need a weight system. So I made a weight system, and it, it worked okay. And then I ended up just spending $80 on this explosive ops gear weight system, which just basically has a bunch of lead weights and a black multi-cam pouch on the back. Then... Why did you not go for an extra battery pack as your back weight? Because, well, as I'm set up now, my PVS-14 uses AA batteries. So at some point, I may convert that to a different power setup. Uh, but for now, I'm, like I'm kind of over fucking spending money on this system. I actually did get the Enforce light that Nick hates. Uh, I don't think it's good as a weapon light. I do think as an IR administrative light on my helmet uh, that it's going to do okay. Uh, I've read a bunch of stuff. Generally, Enforce is considered okay for like helmet mounts and helmet lights and things like that. So uh, don't report me to the Reddit trolls because I think that generally this is considered okay. Uh, all right. Now, we did a review on the Psionics. I have a Psionics here. Uh, one of my friends in town here, one of our our friends and listeners has also purchased a psionics for his mount. And I think the psionics is actually a really great alternative to spending thousands of dollars on night vision. This one, this one I have is a little bit more expensive, but you can get the black version for 599 bucks. And Nick and I have messed with these a lot. There was a lag in the beginning, but then we got a firmware update and that actually worked really well. The problem is getting these mounted on a helmet is a little bit of a little bit of a problem. In fact, I think that uh, he ended up he ended up having to buy a couple different things, and they've got some three D printed stuff. But he ended up spending a couple, a few hundred dollars on mounts for his five hundred and ninety nine dollar uh, Psionics Aurora. The worst problem with the Psionics is it makes a lot of sounds and it has a lot of flashy lights. So if you're really going for some stealth, that's going to be a problem. If you just want to do some night fire and have fun and see IR stuff. Like, I think it's actually a really good option. Um, we've used it outside. We've used it shooting. We've used it walking. And once we got that firmware update, everything has been actually super okay. So you buy two Psionics and can use them as, as like a duels versus your single PV, P, whatever 14 that you have. Yeah. So we actually did put that on his helmet and I think it was okay ish. Okay. So uh, you can see how to size. Yeah. Yeah. Your field of view angle is going to be maybe, maybe even a little bit bigger, but is it 75 degrees. Psionics is, is interesting in how it works. I don't know how great it would be, but like as a single monocular, I think for most people's purposes, it's going to work great. 
it's different because it's not the actual night vision. It's digital night vision. Uh, but it does have some benefits like you can record video and take pictures and uh, there, there's a lot of good things about it. And for if, if you're LARPing at the range, like I'm doing, it's, it's a pretty great option for not a whole ton of money. I mean, 599 is still pretty pricey. However, uh, if you're just LARPing at the range, that's cool. If you're actually, you know, into the world as we know it, other people are going to have night vision and they're going to see your shit. Uh, and it needs IR light to be able to use it where, so my night vision doesn't need any, IR, the PVS 14 doesn't need any IR light. Uh, it, it just sees in the dark, the psionics, it needs IR light. And if you're, if you're shining IR light for you to see, and it's the end of the world as we know it, everyone else who has night vision is going to see that as well. Security cameras are going to see it. Security cameras are going to see you. So just keep that in mind that if you're LARPing and training and just trying to get good, trying to do something different, it's a fantastic option. Anyway, that was a lot, but what do you think? That's very I, informative. I think I'm going to buy some PVS 31s and a Steiner D ball and just flex on, flex on you like a motherfucker. <laughs> so, I mean, look, like I can't <laughs> lot, like really expensive stuff. But the problem is, is that if I do this stuff, like I am doing it to talk about on this show, to post about on social media, to put out videos on and things like that. So like that's unrealistic for a lot of people. I mean, uh, I don't give a fuck. Stop being a poor. You ever tried not being a fucking poor? I tried. It didn't work out too well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried working it. on it. I, tr I tried. And then I started doing podcasts for a living. Hey, uh, uh, Geez, so that's yeah. Remember that's, when you had Heron money? Yeah, now you have Heron money, and it's horrible. Right <laughs> now, yeah. Heron is associated with poorness. Exactly right. Like Heron money now, like buys menthols <laughs> and whatnot. Uh, but sorry, Aaron, what were you gonna say? Uh, I was just gonna say segue into something else. But if you have more, you want to talk about? No, I think I, I think that, oh, and then actually I did want to talk real quick about, um, your MP5. Yeah. Well, it's not an MP5. It's a PTR nine C, uh, MP5 look, clone. it's an MP5 clone for sure. Uh, so I posted on Instagram cause I was having a problem with the mounting system. So I actually had this scout light. I had it on the bottom. I had the pressure switch on the left hand side, I'm sorry, on the right hand side so that my fingers could grip it. But the problem was, is this rail was so short and the PTR rail only has M lock at uh, three, six and nine. And it was causing a problem where basically my front fingers had to go over the light and then I could use my back fingers to, to activate the light with the switch. And actually I did buy a cloud defensive uh, tape switch holder, which works really, really well. It was 60 bucks, which kind of sucks, but uh, it is what it is. So I posted on Instagram. I said, Hey, give me, give me some help here. I know this, this mounting system is not ideal. I had a bunch of listeners reach out and every single one of them said that I needed a Midwest Inter industries MP5 handguard because it's got, uh, at three, like four thirty, six o'clock, seven thirty, and nine. And that worked. Oh, and actually they've got one on the top too, which is where I have the scout light on an Arasaka defense M lock mount which those are like another 50 bucks. And, but now it's freaking awesome and it works really, really well. And I don't have to worry about any of that stuff at all. And I wanted to give a shout out to those guys, Austin and Hunter and uh, Jeff and Mark. Thank you guys all for recommending that it works perfectly. It's exactly what I wanted. And uh, yeah, I'm digging this gun more and more. Uh, now that I've got that on there. Cause I also, I wanted something with night vision capabilities that was a pistol caliber. So <sighs> I think that's it. I think that's my night vision setup for now. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it works well and I don't have to sink any more money into it uh, because it's a lot. All right, Aaron, who do you want to talk about? No, I'm not playing this game, Sean. <laughs> but if I were to pick, I'd pick Medical Gear Outfitters. All right, yeah, Medical Gear Outfitters. I taught a medical class yesterday. Did I tell you guys? I saw your post. Yeah, I saw, did a civilian medical class uh, in conjunction with Kanaz Tactical Group. So I do those classes on my own. And then on occasion, Robert from Kanaz Tactical Group will actually uh, 
get a bunch of his students who want to take med classes and send them over to me. Uh, so I taught that. It was an absolute blast. Uh, we had a ton of fun, packed a bunch of wounds, did a bunch of scenarios, listened to a bunch of screaming. One of the things I've added to the class now is during all the scenarios, I just have a YouTube video that's 30 minutes of panic crowd screams. And I put it on a Bluetooth speaker and I just like hold it right next to their head the entire time. <laughs> it's so annoying and aggravating. And I love is it, it. Is it just recorded from Nick in the bathroom? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Nick. <laughs> it's it's so weird how Nick gets sick so often on Mondays. Yeah. Rest yeah, week, Nick. functioning just fine. Mondays, no. Nope. Random, it's random it's colds. Fun. Some people just don't like Mondays. Yeah, I think he's always got a case on Mondays. Fuck yeah. Monday. Well, fuck this Monday in particular. <laughs> yes, tell us why. Are we, are we at story time yet? No, no, we're not. God we're, damn it. Did we finish the ad read? We're, weren't we done? I taught a medical class. Ad read. Okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Tell us more about this medical class that you taught using... Uh... Medical gear outfitters equipment. Well, no, it was just uh, all the stuff that I actually do. I started having kits on hand because people wanted to buy them, and it, it made sense. I just never wanted to be in that business. Uh, but all the kits are the ones that that are for sale on medicalgearoutfitters.com. We've got the MFAC, which is the kind of lightweight cargo pocket vacuum sealed one, and then you buy a cat tourniquet separately. I've also got one step up that I had him design a bunch for me. It's the MFAC with a cat inside of it, and then all the civilian medical pouches that I designed that he sells over there as well. And I generally sell out almost every single class, which is pretty awesome. And it just the price is amazing. So for about 140 bucks, you can get an entire uh, trauma kit that treats massive bleeding, airway, respiration, circulation, and heat loss all in one. And they're awesome. Medicalgearoutfitters.com coupon code. We like shooting. It saves you money. 11% actually. Oh, and on the next episode of Civilian Medical Podcast, we're going to design an RV kit. Ooh. Yeah, weird how that works, right? Jeremy, how's your day? Fucking horrible. I want to hear about it. Tell me all about it. All right. So this story Let's doesn't really give a fuck. This this story doesn't really end. So like, don't expect like uh you know like a fucking like flourish at the end and like you know conclusion to the story. It just we're used to that. Yeah. All right. So I woke up this morning, got dressed, got the kids ready. Take my uh, take my kids to daycare like I do three days a week. <sighs> On the way to daycare, I got two kids in the back seat of the truck. Yeah, some fucking just dumb motherfucker. One a one vehicle accident just drives into a big old country ditch on the side of the road. All right, right, not that big of a deal. The ditch is actually deep enough to swallow the entire truck, so traffic can just move normally while retard is in said ditch. But no, I happen to get there right at the exact time that I am the first person stopped by the highway patrolman. Oh. <laughs> so the car in front of me actually went around the tow truck and made it to the light. I got stopped by the highway patrolman. He's like, oh my fuck. So I just sit there for 30 minutes and I was early. I was actually early. Like I was actually early this morning because I had shit to do. I'm like, I'm fucking early. But no, not anymore. Fuck that noise. <laughs> so I sit there for a half an hour. My oh kids my almost my kids almost missed breakfast at daycare because of fucking some dumbass curly headed kid doesn't know how to fucking drive and decide he just wanted to put his truck in a ditch. Damn it. And the other thing was like, bitch, I got a one ton diesel. Just I got a fucking tow strap. I'll rip that motherfucker out of the ditch. It looks fine. Just drive it the fuck out of here. I don't care if there's mud in your grill. Get the fuck out of my way. But no. So finally get the daycare, drop the fucking kids off and uh, look at the time. Oh shit. I got a dentist appointment at nine. I was planning on running back home to let the dog out. Oh, I got a dog, by the way. I was running back home to let the dog out. 
because she'd been in there all goddamn night. I'm like, all right, get a little little training. Nope, got to go straight to the fucking dentist. Poor fucking dog's got to sit in the goddamn kennel. So I go to the fucking dentist. Dentist takes for fucking ever. I look at my watch. It is 9.55. I have to be at work at 10, and I'm on the other side of the town, two towns away. (laughs) So I'm already going to be late to work, so I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to go get fucking uh some stuff to train the dog with at the at tractor supply so i get i go to track supply get my shit i'm already late as shit i don't give a fuck right i get home i let the dog out i go back and they're working on my mom's addition behind my house i'm putting an addition on the back of my house for my mom to live in yeah and they're pouring the footers today the plumber left a six inch piece of pipe to sleeve the footer so we can get the sewer through the uh water lines are going to go overhead so not a problem um the sanitary though has to be sleeved through the footer here's the fucking problem there's the footer for the house for the wall and a footer for the porch and the sanitary has to go through both of them and you can't just stick a piece of pipe here and stick a piece of pipe here because you'll never get the fucking pipe to line up Mm -hmm. so i realize at I'm already a half hour late for work. I realized at 10 30 this morning, I need to dig a 12 foot trench, 18 <laughs> inches deep oh. through where a 60 foot Oak tree just sat. Holy mm. shit. So roots. Where, yeah. It's going to be like, where there's some roots, all of here? the fucking roots. So, this realization dawns on me and I'm motherfucking everything on the goddamn planet. Um, and I'm already pissed off. And then I realize I don't have enough fucking six inch pipe. So I got to, so I got to put, I put the dog in the kennel in the bed of my truck and, and tie it down. And I'm like, well, the dog's just coming with me. So I, we drive to fucking, uh, Wolf brothers, which is like a supply place. Um, drive to Wolf brothers. My like, hey, I need two, I need a, do you, I'm like, do you have a 12 foot PVC pipe? Like, no, we only sell 10 foot. I'm, I need 12 foot. He goes, then you got to get two of them. I'm like, I don't want two of them. I want 12 feet of it. He goes, that's too bad. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm having to argue with Jeremy. Like, no, I, we I, don't have 12 foot. Fuck off. I, yeah. Like, I'm like, I, I'm like, fine, whatever. Fuck it. Just get everything. Give me two of them. I'm like, I don't need the extra eight feet, but fuck it. All right. So. I go pick that up. I drive back to the house. I put the fucking dog away. Jeremy has poor time management skills. No, I got fucked every hour of the day today <laughs> and not the good way. I got fucked. I didn't do the fucking. It's um, funny how he spelled poor, too, by the way. Huh? How he spelled poor. P O U R. Like you're pouring something instead of yeah. being inexpensive. So I go get a fucking spade and I start digging a fucking trench right meanwhile i'm already not at work and like i'm like i got a fucking business to run this isn't my fucking job the plumber should be fucking here but he's somewhere else and i gotta do this shit because like it's on fucking me because i'm the gc so i'm like i gotta dig this fucking trench so i start digging the fucking trench and uh it, yeah root city so i'm like through 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 dig 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 and i'm just trying to get it done like as fast as i can but um it's not happening so about 30 minutes into it, I hit a fucking root. So I'm like, oh, motherfucker. So I stomp on the shovel and nothing happened. It just, thump. so I'm like, oh. so I like jump in the air and double boot on top of the shovel to like cut through a fucking roof or roof, cut through the root. And I fucking snap the shovel head oh. right off the handle. <laughs> I'm so mad at this point. Now, <laughs> mind you, there's four workers from the concrete company tying rebar together in the footer, tying all the rebar together and like, you know, doing their job. And there was a giant man with a gun on his hip who just snapped the shovel and he was swearing when he got here going, God damn motherfucking son of a bitch. I'm fucking, I'll fuck. And I picked the shovel head. Uh, I'm so fucking mad. I threw the shovel head in the hair and just whacked it like a baseball bat with the fucking uh, shovel handle. And I missed their laser by like five feet. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care at that point. Um, 
So now I'm just motherfucking everything because I just snapped the goddamn shovel. I can't dig a fucking hole because of all the fucking roots. And uh, so I'm like, all right, I got another shovel in the barn. So I start walking back. You know, I have two shovels because I break them. So I walk back to the barn to find my other shovel. While I'm back there, I grab a fucking axe um, after I threw the. <sighs> I threw the busted one in the bed of my truck. Go get that one. Come back. I'm fucking, I got an axe now, so I'm like one hand and a fucking axe at the sides of the fucking trench, cutting fucking roots out, and I'm just digging it out, digging it out, digging it out, and uh, so I get like most of the way done digging this fucking trench, and then I remember <coughs> over on the other side of the foundation where the footer's going, there's the water line that goes back to the barn. That line has been abandoned for 15, 20 years because it broke up by the house. Now it's fine. And I told him, hey, look, you're probably going to find a water line back here somewhere. I need that. That goes back to the barn. Um, if you find it, like pigtail it up or, you know, let me know where it's at. Uh, well, they found it with the excavator and <laughs> cut it right in half. Um, Jesus. And then never did anything with it. So I'm like, fuck. So the plumber had left some four inch pipe as well. So I go and like, I'm just borrowing tools from these poor bastards. And they're just probably scared to death that I'm going to shoot them. If they don't like, let me borrow a fucking handsaw. And, uh, like I, when I was walking back to the barn after I, after I broke the shovel, like I almost just pulled the gun out of my holster. It just shot into the lake just to make myself feel better. Um, I didn't, you should have, I wanted to really bad. If I'd had a machine gun, I probably would have. Um, so I'm like, oh, shit. So I got to go over there. So I go over there and I dig around and find it now. Yeah. Wow. Well, in real time. No, this is not real time. This is the this is the shortened version because this shit took me all day. So I go over there and I start. I'm like, hey, do you guys see a water line over here? And they're like, yeah, right there. So I'm like, OK, so I start digging with my hands. So I got to like sleeve this son of a bitch and it's in the footer where the porch is so i gotta sleeve this fucking thing and i'm like using my wife's gardening tools to like pull the fucking wall out of the footer so i can like mash this thing over and then like pack it back with mud so that it doesn't get full of concrete so i can dig a hole under the porch and like tie it in and like get it into the building so like that takes me another you know 30 40 minutes of my fucking time fucking around then i gotta go back to the fucking ditch and figure that thing out finally get that shit fucking squared away then the inspector shows up and he's like oh my plan say this and the concrete guys are like oh my plan say this so we spend 20 minutes fingering that shit out and i'm just laying on the ground going i don't give a shit as long as it's good and so uh long story short oh and yeah so i didn't make it to work until 2 30 jeez um yeah, I didn't make it to work until 2.30 in the afternoon. I was supposed to be there at 10. Uh, the store didn't even open until like 11.30 this morning. Good Lord. Hey, Seth, it's just what it feels like when you talk about Washington. No, that, like, that was... <laughs> and, then, and then, like, we just opened up on Mondays again, so, like, it's super slow on Mondays. So, like, I get to work finally, and, like, I had to shower, like, change my entire... That's fucking filthy. Like, there's mud in my truck. I'm like, God damn it. Oh, and then after I got done, I showered. I looked at my watch, and I was like, oh, fuck. I'm like, I got two whole chickens in the fridge outside that I was going to make beer can chicken with. Oh, man. So I'm like, and I look at my watch and I'm like, all right, it's, it's like two o'clock. And I pull my phone up with the recipe and they're like, oh, it takes about four hours to fucking cook. And I'm oh. like, oh. So I fucking whirlwind these chickens together and put them on the fucking smoker, get the smoker started. And uh, so I had beer can chicken for dinner. It was fantastic. Um, and uh, then I went to work and uh, the new dog that I got, uh, I had dropped it off earlier uh, with uh, the girl who works for me, Lauren, who is a vet tech. Um, so she was like, she loves dogs. So she's like, I'll train the dog while you're doing stuff. So she was actually working with the dog all day and uh, um, it's doing pretty good, but yeah, that's awesome. So 
Yeah, that was, that was a rough day, dude. I'm oh, actually- and then like I was ha- I was halfway through my the fucking ditch, and the one guy I actually went to high school with, he showed up. He ran the uh, the boom truck for the concrete. Mm-hmm. He goes, "Hey!" and he yells one of the guys' names on the crew that's been watching me this whole time. He goes, "Don't you have a Maddox on the truck?" And he goes, "Yeah." And he goes, "Do you think he'd like to use it?" And the guy goes probably <laughs> do you want to use our maddox i'm like yeah i'd like to use your fucking maddox but <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> i'll go get it <laughs> it's like mother fucker i'm actually surprised that you didn't commit violence today i oh i did commit violence um the the i you know why do you think i got a dog man beat the dog um <laughs> no i um I I punched some things, but they were not brokeable, so it was fine. That's good. Um, I punched a lot of dirt. Um, <laughs> Jeremy just out punching the earth. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, Gaia. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I hit that shovel head like a baseball, and uh, apparently that was the talk of the construction site. Uh, after I left and come back, everybody's like, "What's up, slugger?" I'm like, fuck, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I'll hit you with this fucking <laughs> Um Yeah. Good story. It was a cool bad, story, bro. It was a bad day. Like dude. I was bleeding and I fucking hurt now. And uh <sighs> wait, so beer can chicken, is that like tiny little chickens? What is that one bite for you? No, it's a whole chicken. How do you fit a chicken in a beer can? No, you fit a beer can in a chicken oh weird you have never done it no oh see there's a little stand that you buy oh, great. Here we go. and a beer can fits in it and then you take a chicken uh, you know the look it's not their asshole they cut the whole back end out of the thing and it just slides over the beer can and then you cook it and as it cooks the the beer steams the inside of the chicken it keeps it moist Oh, and that's pretty good moist uh adds a little bit of flavor and uh you know the chicken doesn't dry out which is one of the hardest parts about cooking chicken so all right i need to do it yeah I've, beer can chicken you can fantastic i, I made my i made i made one for my wife in a gluten-free cider she mm. said was enjoyable that's good i i feel like cooking beer cans probably has some carcinogens but i'm down with it um, I got an Australian shepherd. It actually looks exactly like, uh, Sean's dog, but normal size. Yeah. Big size. Yeah. Like correct size. Mm-hmm. Not some fucking toy, toy bullshit. Wow. Angel's going to kill him. I don't care. <laughs> I'll fight her. Oh, which actually reminds me, I tried. Someone mentioned that the the Blackbeard from Mantis X works in machine guns. So I was like, "Really? That's very interesting." Does it? Oh yes, it does. So that is pretty cool. It works with binary triggers too. I didn't know that. Totally unrelated to nutrient survival. Who's what we're what we're going to talk about right now, Aaron? Um, I feel like you're probably looking at Facebook or something right now. So maybe I'll, I'll talk about it. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I just got this funny spam message it says, what's up? Are you Aries? It's Lane Laney. We chatted about on scout before when I came to hang out with you, my grandma, we didn't meet off. We didn't meet offline. I'm back in the area again. You, you want to really meet up this time? Are you open to that? I, and I responded, send nudes. <laughs> and then they respond dang did i text just text some random guy dang i apologize i could be such a dumb sometimes it's obviously some sort of s- spam scam yeah yeah but, oh yeah you know, uh, i didn't get a nude but uh i got a picture oh, nice. there you go that's totally yeah. nice yeah, yeah. It's like yeah some totally so, somebody you hang, hung out with yeah right, right. Aaron's getting raped yeah <laughs> wait ask her if her husband listens to we like shooting because then it's probably very likely <laughs> <laughs> All right, i'm asking right now okay in the meantime nutrient survival uh talking about beer can chicken you ever think about beer can lasagna that doesn't make any sense i but, don't know uh you could totally do that yeah Ooh, i should try to smoke some nutrient survival it is like, for episode it's, 20. It's, it's 20. <laughs> there you go and it Enough is for the challenge period. yeah oh yeah so anyway 
there's a lot of challenges coming up here. Uh, Savage just agreed. Aaron and Jeremy are doing a 30 day. It's getting Savage is Aaron, doing a 30 day. Aaron, you're doing it again. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> nice. Uh, Angel and I are doing 14 days. Ooh, you bumped oh, it up. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, Angel agreed to 14 and then I felt like a little bitch for only doing seven. Yeah. Dude, so, this is going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. You're going to listen. The food is good. It and is. That's the one thing. And it's nutrient dense, which is really important. It's not going to be a bunch of just empty calories that you, that you're using to fill, fill the hole. You know, Dude, I'll tell you what, like saying nutrient dense is one thing. The fact that we lived on that food, when I'm thinking about survival food, I'm like, oh, okay, let me, you know, what do I need? Like, I, and then everyone's like, oh, MREs, they're going to back you up. But then you chew the gum and it's got a laxative and then you poop your pants. And I, that that's the thing is like, we lived on that food for 30 days. It, like, that's the, that's the entire advertisement. And the, like the reason that we're working at that company, like we lived on it for 30 days, living our normal lives, doing the things that we do. Uh, I think Aaron, you did some house construction stuff while we were doing it. I did two trips while we were doing it. It is, uh, it is nutrient dense, but more importantly, like you can live on it and feel great. Yeah. I mean, like watch my, my blood pressure go down, uh, which it was high. I watched my BMI go down, which was high. I watched, uh, my concentration go up, which was low. You know, <laughs> I definitely had some days of, of mental fog, but the plain and simple fact is like I went from like a three or four thousand calorie a day diet to like twelve hundred. Man, yeah. man, oh my god, that's yeah. insane. Three, four thousand calories. Oh my god. Yeah, because I was eating out twice a day every day. And not in the good way, if you know what I mean. Um <laughs> but yeah, so like I lived on it and I thrived. I did well. I was healthier at the end than I was at the beginning. And this is like food for the end of the world, right? It's survival food. It's in the name, nutrient survival. Uh, the bowel movement index, mine, at, at the very beginning, there was a little bit of fluctuation. Uh, and then after about a week, I evened out. Aaron, what was yours? Well, you know, we always joke about how I, I, I was able to spackle a toilet. Mm -hmm. But it actually became normal human poop after that, which was really weird for me. <laughs> that's good so i like i had the exact opposite effect i went from like being irregular to actually being regular yeah anyway uh we've got a lot of stuff nick actually can't do it because he's dead uh but also any dietary change would actually probably kill him if he's still yep. alive i don't really yep. know i don't care uh but nutrient survival is it's the real deal and i i, I don't know how to say it better than that that like it's probably the best test of a product that we've ever done in the history of We Like Shooting. Well, it's also a test of yourself, too. Because, like, I have, an, I love Diet Coke. Like, I, I drink Diet Coke like water. <laughs> it, it basically is. It, I know. And then I have, like, I at least usually have, like, a beer or, a, you know, a, a drink at night. So, <laughs> that, and then. And then, uh, yeah, probably. Uh, and then I, I also like snacking late at night too. So I'm like, I do all the bad things, but I still have like somewhat small portions of things. So it's going to be really hard to kind of change it up and go from like potato chips to whatever the healthy snack is. And I, they, I assume they have some like some things that are sweet. Like I saw like there was the cookies and the, the peanut butter stuff. So it's not like you're going, there's like no, no sugar. There's at least some kind of sweet tasting thing that's filling. And I, I'm, I'm asking you, I don't know. I'm, uh, yeah, they have, they have sweet snacks. So the peanut butter bars, they've got the cookies, a few different kinds of cookies. And basically the rules are, you're going to basically eat five times a day. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to have three servings of the food and then two servings of snacks. So what I did was just have one of the shakes in the morning and then like a home style scramble for lunch. This is the longest ad read ever, whatever. Uh, and then I would do like lasagna or one of the other things for dinner. And in between those two things, I would have the peanut butter bars in the morning and the cookies at night or, or whatever. So it's not like you're eating a ton. You're just eating more often, which is probably resetting your metabolism. And, and then you fast, you know, overnight and then you start it all over again the next day. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I usually don't eat breakfast. I eat like at around like 11 AM Same. <laughs> and then like four 30 dinner and then the snack around like seven, 8 PM or something like that. 
it was a change. Uh, I definitely had, I, I did the shake in the morning cause it was easy, right? I just put it in a little blender with a couple ice cubes and some water mm -hmm. and, and blended it and then drank it. And that counted for one of my meals. So it was good that way. And it was easy cause I don't eat breakfast. You know what yeah. I ate today? What'd you eat today? Beer can chicken. Uh, I had, a, I had a whole chicken. <laughs> his supply is going to be gone in a week is no his, no his but that was supply. all i didn't eat till six thirty no seven i didn't eat till after seven o'clock today like i just didn't eat all day so i had so i didn't eat all day and then after seven o'clock after the kids went to bed i had a chicken um and i had three like small red potatoes like that with sour cream and cheese and then i had some chips and dip sounds pretty amazing uh anyway uh stay tuned for all the other challenges i know johnny b is doing a challenge right now aaron has yeah. he he's doing good yeah i saw his i saw his uh video today he's down 17 pounds whoa wow right yeah cray cray yeah someone cue that drama llama go uh, Wait, but to the eye, those little cross eyed things. <laughs> <laughs> NutrientSurvival.com, coupon code WLS10. We have the best discount code that there is out there. Uh, it saves you 10.1%. We got that extra 0.1 for you because WLS listeners deserve better. Right? If you don't, yeah. And if you don't do it, you ain't got no nipples. Oh, I don't even know where we're at at this point. WLS is lifestyle. What you got? Uh, wait, let's do let's do our tour chit chat. Okay, let's do it. What do you want? Uh, I'm flying out. Was it Thursday? I honestly don't know. I, I'd have to look. Actually, uh, I don't remember. But I'm flying out this week to see Sean in Denver. Friday. You're coming in Friday night. Okay, I'm coming in Friday night, and we uh, I fly in to Denver. <laughs> Hold on a second. I just read that comment. <laughs> I, I read it thinking it was going to say one thing, and then I got to the bottom, and it, Zach C says, Sean and that beard over here looking like ZZ Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, Aaron. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah, I fly out to Denver. <laughs> sorry. Laugh at that. And, uh, Sean, you're going to pick me up in the, uh, in the RV, right? No, I'm picking you up Friday night, and then... Coming back down. I was going to have you rent a car, but honestly, like that doesn't work because you're flying out from Wichita, so... It is what it is. Uh, so I'm going to pick you up Friday night and then Friday, or I'm sorry, Saturday morning. Uh, we leave probably around 7.30 or 8 a.m. And we head to Wichita, Kansas to the Rainier Arms Firearms Academy, which is a gun range training center retail store for their fall fest where there's going to be about 23 vendors. It's free. It's open to the public. You can come in. Uh, do things, have fun. And we will have the tour RV there in the parking lot. We will also be sleeping in the parking lot. Uh, you know, if you like midnight visits, let Aaron know. Mm -hmm. He will take you up on that offer. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Bring cake. <laughs> It'll be awesome. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're doing. And then, uh, Aaron, I think you fly out Monday morning. I, mm -hmm. I drive home Monday morning. Uh, the WLS Angel one is coming with us. Uh, one of our friends slash listeners. Can't wait. And, yeah, it's going to be a party. You guys are sharing the, the couch. Oh, okay. Uh, and then also, um, after that, then, then we're, I'm like home for what, five days and I fly back. Oh no, I hitch a ride with Jeremy and we're going to drive down to the Iraq vet where you're going to have the RV again mm -hmm. and, uh, we'll be, we'll be there yes, in the Iraq so, vet, Georgia. Yeah. So I turn around, come home. I take the RV back to the shop because, uh, I'm picking up tomorrow morning. They didn't have a chance to fix everything because they had to order a bunch of parts. So I'm picking it up tomorrow morning. And then I take, I come back from Wichita. I drive it back off at the shop to fix the, that thing. And then I'm here for like two days and I leave to head out to Georgia. Yeah. It's going to be so great, man. I mean, like, it's funny cause I haven't, I haven't traveled in so long and suddenly it's like a whirlwind of travel. All yeah. Night. It's going to be awesome, man. I'm really looking forward to it. I feel like release the Kraken, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. it's, it's going to be great. Uh, we're, we'll be at, like I said, staying at the Rainier Arms thing. Uh, they've got hookups for us and all that stuff at the at the training academy. I'm really looking forward to it. We're, we'll be there, Swamp Fox. I saw a bunch. I like Cloud Defensive should have people there. Uh, I saw Polymer Adial have people there. It's going to be amazing. And again, just a big shout out to Swamp Fox Optics. 
uh, for having, I don't know, the poor decision-making abilities to uh, provide us with the tour RV and do everything. And uh, we'll be hanging out with those guys. Uh, it's going to be absolute blast. My only concern is uh, Jeremy has a um, uh, history of damaging things when he, we stay at places. Make sure he's not allowed in the RV drunk. Uh, so when we're in Georgia, because it would be really awkward for us all to stay in the RV, uh, we are sharing a place with Black Diamond Guns of Gear. Oh, the Joshes? Yeah, the Joshes. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Swamp Fox Optics, this is the Liberator 2. It's Shake Awake. Uh, fantastic battery life. I have it on my MP5. It will never come off. It's perfect. It's amazing in every way. SwampFoxOptics.com. Coupon code is life. But yeah, man, lots of stuff. The tour is going to be off the hook, off the chains, fellow rock stars. I don't know what I'm saying. Nicholas T said, no show next Monday. Nope, we're having the show. Aaron will be home about noon, and I'll be home about 3 or 4. Yep, Monday it is. And Aaron and WLS Ancient One are christening the RV. Mm-hmm. And by, by christening, we mean Sean's face. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope, this is how you end up right. sleeping in Wichita outside, like a homeless uh, person. <laughs> like, I haven't done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time, sir exactly um yeah man uh, let's do some let's do some news oh hang on hang on hang on uh the ancient one brought up a really good point the rv needs a name you know i was thinking about this actually and it's got the francis marion because you know the swamp fox is all about like the revolutionary war stuff and they've got francis marion the the warrior uh, on the back with like a tomahawk and everything and it's it's so the 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 wrap is matte black and then shiny black on the back they have that francis marion so i was kind of thinking francis would be a great name for the rv francis, francis. Uh -huh. as in francis o'rourke as in francis marion the fucking name i just said five <laughs> times <laughs> i know but it, i'm just trying to do a a lead in lead into the first story Oh, oh. Shit. okay. We should, call it, to me. we should call it the the, uh, the Krieger uh, Krieger's wagon. I didn't mean to to uh, sound so pompous, Savage. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> the Krieger's wagon, which is a war wagon. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, I know you don't read my notes. No. So anyway, I did actually. Okay, I know. Um, so uh, Beto O'Rourke had a failed run for the presidency, and then he had a. Um, Failed run for the Texas Senate. Didn't quite make it there going against Ted Cruz. So now to top that off, he wants to go ahead and run for governor of Texas. Now, I might be reading this the wrong way, but I, I believe that he might not have the best chances of winning in Texas after he said, hell yes, we're coming for your guns. <laughs> Well, am I am I reading the room wrong, Texans? I mean, I'm I was born in San Antonio. My dad's from Texas. All my family is from Texas. Um, I, I, I'm familiar with the area. I've been down there a few times. I think Texas people kind of like firearms. I just 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 a hint, just a just a feeling I get from down there. Uh, so it's I, I think it's just absolutely fucking moronic that the the Democrats would think that better work would stand a chance of getting the governorship in Texas. And they're going to waste money on that of all things. It just blows me away. I mean, here's the thing. Texas is changing and not in a good way and not all, I don't want to like paint Texas with a broad brush, but Austin, Houston, Dallas, these are all becoming liberal strongholds. I no, saw no, 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 no. All big cities have always been liberal and democratic strongholds. Well, we've seen this in Colorado with Boulder and Denver and Fort Collins. And now suddenly because of gerrymandering and a bunch of idiot pieces of shit moving here because of legal weed, uh, we have ended up basically Colorado's a liberal state period end of in, full stop. And what they're, they, you know, the te Texas Democrats have been there for a long time, but you are usually going to be very hard pressed to find Texas Democrats that are as strongly anti-gun or as dumb about saying shit about guns as Beto. 
and with with how strong he came out against them. I mean, there's a lot of Democrats and a lot of new uh, gun owners that are Democrats, you know. So uh, it's it's kind of a big sticking point at this at this juncture, especially after this last year. I think people have gotten to recognize that gun ownership is a big deal. We brought in a lot of people on the left. A lot of uh, you know different demographics have come in under the fold, and they're realizing that yeah, you know what. It's it's better to have gun ownership than not have gun ownership. And if he's going to come out that hard against it, especially in Texas, I just don't see him winning. I just don't see it. And even even though the governor <laughs> fucked up <laughs> with their power situation over the winter time, and people are angry at him, I still don't think Beto is the better alternative as far as most Texans are concerned. Well, no, because it, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with what issue you vote on. A lot of Texans like guns, sure. But somebody, some Texan likes guns, but they go, but those nasty Republicans um, don't want us to kill babies or embryos or whatever the fuck. Like, it doesn't matter. Or, well, they they just sure don't like those faggots, so I'm not going to vote for them. Even though even though I really think uh, Democrats got it wrong on the guns, you know, gays getting married really means more to me than, uh, uh, you know, than owning guns. I'm a one issue voter. Yeah. Let me actually, so here I, I am too mostly these days. Here's what I think is going to happen. So we had Biden tell Beto that he was going to make him the guns are right. The anti yes. guns are. Yes. Then we had that failed bid to appoint David Chipman as the director of the ATF. Yep. Uh, withdrawn that nomination now that's not going to yep. happen it has been rumored multiple times now that chipman is going to have a house in the, or i'm sorry a desk in the in the in the white house or the west wing or the, the, the other place uh, you know down the block a little ways and that that job position might be the the guns are which i think is very interesting so now i think that clearly the administration has to come out you know, and say like hey we've got chipman we want him to be the guns are but what we'll do is we'll put our full support behind you in a bid for some other office. What do you say, Texas governor? So you're going to see Beto. You're going to see him probably come out just a little bit more central uh, politically than you would have seen because he's also possibly going to be racing against Matthew McConaughey, uh, who is going to run as a very centrist or run as a centrist. So you're going to see them going. Then you're going to see the Biden administration maybe follow up on their word and actually push Beto for that Texas governor, which is going to bring a lot of those new transplants from California to that side. Because, you know, if Biden does it and all these goddamn Texans that, uh, you know, want to have abortions or that don't want to have abortions and don't want rape victims to be able to get rid of these, you know, evil embryos. And I think that I think that Beto might actually have a chance. Like I want to believe that Texas is not that state, but having seen Colorado go from the wild West to just the absolute worst. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I think that that might be a thing and I hope someone comes back in a few months after I turn out to be right and clips the sound. I mean, I hope he gets shot by a cartel. That'd be cool. I... What? I'm allowed to hope for death. So like, I'm allowed to hope people die. You're allowed to do anything. This used to be America. Yes. I hear but. no bell. Thought this is America. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like, I, I don't know. I, I think he's got a better chance than we're giving him credit for it. And it maybe still be close. And I think that Abbott <laughs> he's a fucking maniac and I love every second of it. So although now they got that voter now they got voter ID law. Let's see if those numbers change a bit. Maybe. I oh god, if they do, I'll shit. Uh, well, if they don't, you won't. Ever. Well, no, because I mean, well, no, because you're if it's like if they're like, oh, we don't need voter ID, we don't need we don't need election security. It's fine the way it is, and then like the next election, it's like way more Republican than it used to be. Like it, you know, uh, Cruz didn't beat Beto out by much. Like it was pretty. There's only a couple of points. Yeah. Um, but like if it runs again and it's like forty sixty, and you're like, hmm. Hmm. I wonder if there was some fuckery going on in those uh, previous elections. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's kind of interesting. 
pretty soon. Yeah. Go ahead, Savage. Sorry. Nah, it's fine. It's just... So uh, move on. Moving on to the next thing. So back back in uh, 2020, we uh, saw. Well, it says here in the report, uh, gun registration gun registrations climbing to an all time high. Though we all know that. <laughs> it's not registrations. I think they meant to say gun sales uh, coming to an all-time high in 2020. Uh, so this report coming from uh, Harvard, T.H. Uh, Chan School of Public Health at and Northwestern University, interestingly enough, um, they conducted a study and found that nearly half of all new gun owners were women in the previous year, which I think is absolutely freaking fantastic uh 3.5 million women and 4 million men became first-time gun owners between january 2019 and april 2021 so i you know again i think i think the more diverse groups we get whether it's men and women whether it's whatever uh, demographic you come from i think it's a great thing the more people that come in the better because that is ultimately strengthening the position of the second amendment and that, that's what we really really need boomers everywhere are rubbing their hands together in glee with all the women that they'll be able to mansplain to at the range uh, oh jesus christ yeah and you know and overbearing gun store owners <laughs> <laughs> is, is <laughs> company included <laughs> yeah, stare at me all you want i'll yeah. stay right back <laughs> yeah, uh, why do you look like a retarded Forrest Gump? Which is saying that's something because he was already retarded. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. No, I think it's good actually. Uh, Jeremy, have you seen at the range lots more women? Women? Uh, dude, I did an entire class full of female realtors, and then one guy that I knew realtors, from high school, and I made fun of him. This makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what kind of jokes did you throw at him? Oh, just and, a bunch. And and how many of their cars had live, laugh, love signs on them? I think all of them. Yeah. <laughs> just making sure. Okay, so moving on to the last one here. Uh, so guns using crime in Chicago. So this is an interesting one, and I've got, you know, a oh little bit Oh, my God, of really? <laughs> yes. So, so the story here says that... Uh, most illegal guns in Chicago come from dealers within Illinois that most trafficking cases are built, uh, and most, uh, excuse me, and most uh, trafficking cases are built against single individuals. Uh, it goes on to say, if you think there's like hundreds of guns flowing in a big truck or a big crate, that's not happening. Uh, frequently it's only one or two or five or six firearms at a time that are being diverted. So, um, what this is basically dealing with and in, in Chicago and in, in Illinois in general, they complain about all these guns coming from out of state. It's all Indiana's fault because of their loose gun laws. And that's what's killing all the people in here. And obviously not taking any responsibility for how their gun laws completely fail, even though they have them. And then why aren't the people in Indiana having the same kind of issues with gun crime that Chicago has or, or Illinois. Um, but if you look at the ATF statistics, when they're doing a uh, firearm trace data, uh, you know, again, it shows that the majority of guns that are being used in crime originate or originate as a sale within Chicago. Now they're trying to blame it on on gun dealers, like, oh, it's all the gun dealers' fault. Jeremy knows. Anybody who's an FFL knows. If you are a gun dealer, you have to have somebody fill out a forty four seventy three. They have to go through a background check in order to purchase a gun. And even in Chicago, uh, in Illinois, you have to have an FOA ID card, so you have to get you know, checked out by the fucking uh, government and, you know, go through that whole registration process. So it's like a double system in, in Illinois. So the fact that all the guns in Illinois are still originating in Illinois and the people who are getting them have to go through more or less a double background check. You can't blame that on the fucking gun dealers because the gun dealers are doing their jobs. If they suspect somebody is doing a straw purchase or is not I mean, it, it, even in, in Illinois, it's not even issues if they're not legally able to purchase a gun because they have to show their FOI ID card. So it's that's that's already a moot point. So it's up to them, the the gun dealers, to be uh, psychic and determine if these people are, you know, fucking trying to trying to do a straw purchase for their for their buddies who are trying to go out and shoot people. So I mean, it's a non-issue. So trying to blame this on FFLs in Illinois or Chicago is complete bullshit because they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. If they weren't, 
and Jeremy can back me up on this, the ATF would be on their asses so fucking fast. <laughs> you know, if, if all these guns that were being used in crimes were being traced back to these FFLs, those FFLs have to have logbooks that track everything. And if those logbooks don't line up, they're fucked, right? No. I mean, yes, yeah. But, no. but you, you, I mean, look, straw purchases are really fucking easy. Don't act weird. Know what you want. And um, don't have the person that you're straw purchasing for standing next to you pointing at the gun that he wants. And then he fucks off to the other side of the store before you go, okay, I'll take that one. Like, yeah. like it's not fucking hard to do. Like if, if you just walk in and be like, Hey, do you have a Glock 19? Yeah, there it is. How much right there? Okay, cool. I'll take that. Cool. I've been looking for one of those for a while. Cool. There's nothing suspicious about that. And if you're not a complete fucking idiot, you could do a straw sale pretty fucking easily. So it does it matter. I'm also going to say there's shit bags in everything that we do, right? There are shit bags in every career. There's shit bags in every store, every job. Every there's literally event. doctors and nurses that kill people on purpose because yes. they get a kick out of it. That has happened. And yes, so there are FFLs that are pieces of shit. They're, without question, I know it. I was at a gun yes, show a month ago, and I literally, I'm 90% sure that I saw a straw purchase going down. And the guy, like, it was clearly obvious to anyone paying any attention because all of us were like, oh my God, what the fuck? Yeah, proven court. Right, exactly. And I don't give a shit. I don't think background checks should exist. I do what's required, what's required of me by law. But and nothing there's more. shitheads out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I do nothing more. But I, 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 do I, I don't think I don't even think background check should exist. I want bangers to come buy guns for me because at least then there's a fucking record. <laughs> like, and you, if you have a black market firearms, you have violence and crime that surrounds that black market as well as the shit they're already doing. Like you want mm-hmm. to lower crime in America? Stop outlawing things that have black markets. Yeah. So yeah. knowing that that stuff happens, I mean, I want to know how many of these are gang related. And my guess is like a very oh, high 80, 90%. Yeah. Of them. yeah. yeah. So, well, and the thing that they never talk about is what about all the illegal guns that are imported and snuck into the country that happens way more, way more than like straw purchases and shit Lee like that. <laughs> Lee <Lungi. coughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah right Mr. anti-gun yeah and yeah, i mean so, there I mean, there are shipping containers that hit our shores daily i, dude, I knew an fbi agent he worked on the eastern seaboard and he worked specifically with um importing companies to like check uh like containers and stuff because there's always guns and shit coming through and like that was his job And he said, he goes, if you could magic every gun out of America, every one of them, legal or illegal, you could magic every gun out of America right now, by tomorrow, every banger in the country would have a new gun. That's how many illegal guns come in from overseas. Yeah. Yep. That 80 to 90% of those that are gang related. And of course, we're just literally making that number up, but I, I would be surprised if any of those guns were purchased legally or if it was, it's probably maybe a quarter at best. Yeah. And when they talk about the iron pipeline, you know, trucks worth of guns coming in. I mean, again, the, the guy in the, in the article talked about that. It's not the Dude. case is one, two or five. The, the, the deal is, is that the time to crime for most of the guns coming into uh, <sighs> Chicago or Illinois from outside the state is between eight to 12 years. Like it takes eight to 12 years for a gun to move into the state. That's not like, fucking uh, truckloads of guns coming into the state. That's people moving. It's people going to it, Illinois and Chicago. Didn't, from they other like, states. didn't they like hit an entire fucking train? Mm-hmm. There yeah. was, like oh, a, there, there was yeah, a train yard. It was and delivering there was like, like Rugers or something. Yeah. It was a train car full of guns and they yep. just fucking robbed the train. Yep. Yep. But it was, that was, that was, a, it was a, that was legal firearms being shipped to FFLs through Illinois because Illinois is a major hub uh, for wa- railways and they just hit the train. And it was those were legal guns, but they turned into illegal guns once they all got stolen. Yeah. Freaking nuts, man. So, yeah, of course, they're going after the, you know, the people who are already obeying all their stupid laws. 
yeah, it's it's suddenly the fault of the innocent people that all the criminals are breaking the law. That's how that's how that logic works. Yeah, it's just it's honestly a shit show. <sighs> that's all I got, bro. So annoyed, Aaron. Let me show you factsandfirearms.com real quick because their new products is growing by the minute. Rim fire barrels for 1022, match series barrels for MMP Shield, match series barrels for SIG P365 and 365XL, match series barrels for Glock 4343X, modular mag extensions with new stuff coming and like uh, a few things that we were privy to uh, in Texas recently. Like, I don't know what's going on over there, but they're putting out a lot of products really fast, really quick. We've yeah, always been putting out. They put yeah. out a lot. Those faction yeah. guys, they put out. They uh, obviously we've been friends for a very long time. So uh, go check them out. If any of those things interest you, they've also got guns, the Patriot and the Hellfire, the FX 19, the Patriot and Hellfire slides for MMPs. They've got the summit and the ascent line of their ARs. It's all amazing. Factsandfirearms.com. Coupon code WLS10. It's time for Jeremy to read the reviews. Really looking forward to this. Go ahead, Jeremy. You know the best part about Faxon is what? breaking Evan's nose. That was one of the greatest things that's ever happened in the history of life. That's what happens when you roll with, w, with WLS. Yeah. Shit gets broke. Yeah. Don't do it. It's dumb. It's a bad thing. Hey, then. <laughs> Alan V, $5, says Sean and Jeremy break the law on NFA sales all the time because they never actually read the law. Why? Mm. What's the, what am I breaking? I don't know. Because, like, please explain, Alan, what part of the law you think I'm actually breaking. Yeah, Alan, you fucking fed. I think yeah. he was trying to, up there, uh, What's what's the straw purchase? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's when somebody else gives you money to buy a gun for them, and they're <laughs> and that, you go. That, that is I, an example. Yeah, I think they were being facetious though when they asked that question. Well, well, he bets I'm wrong. Am I wrong? No. Nope. Mike Hawkswallen. <laughs> Mike Hawkswallen. <laughs> okay. Gross. <laughs> Something I didn't want to hear tonight, honestly. <laughs> That's somebody's name in the chat on YouTube. <laughs> Mike Cox. <Hawks> <laughs> <Wolden>. <laughs> it was all in caps, so I had to read it out loud, and then, then I got it. Mm, I bet you did. <laughs> the transferer is the one who is supposed to pay the tax. I do. I just have the transferee write the check and I add it to the final cost. As far as you know, super gorilla glue saw the WLS RV on the road the other day. Looking good. Nice. You should have honked and shown us your tits. Yeah, it was definitely me driving. So unless it wasn't in which case someone's got some explaining to do. Uh, yeah. Next time honk and show us your tits. Cause that's what I want the thing to be. Man tits, women tits, doesn't matter. Show us your tits. All the yeah. tits. If you see the RV, that's that's your job. Jeremy, read the reviews. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Podcast, no silence. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh Dookie Duty. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten squares. Oh my god. It's five thumbs up. Mm. Are you sure? Yeah. Sean, yeah, can you just I mean, fucking remote into his computer and fix his shit? Probably. <laughs> but I, I've got a shirt now that says WLS five squares. Like, I, why would I do that? Yeah. Uh, Look, Jeremy is showing us a screen, maybe. Fucking well, 10, 10 squares. You have, to, you have to knowingly buy for a prohibited person for it to be. How would no, you knowingly not, buy for a pro? Oh, I see. Well, no, no, okay, no. It doesn't have to be a prohibited person. Bonafide gift is is the the word. Uh, if it's a bonafide gift, you would have to, you have to. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'm not disagreeing. You can buy a bonafide gift for another individual uh, as long as that's what it is. But if then if you give a gift worth $500 and then a couple days later, they give you $500. Yeah. Something else like, I don't know. I can imagine the straw purchases. They're different. providing the money. It's well, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of shit with the ATF has to do with intent. You can, right. yes, if you, if you do not have an FFL, you cannot buy, you can, <clears throat> you cannot build a firearm with the intent to sell it. You can, however, sell a firearm that you've built as long as it was not your intent from the beginning well, to do so. Well, there's that recent straw purchase case with the guy and his dad, and he tried to benefit from the blue label program. So his dad gave him the money to buy the Glock, and then he sold the Glock to his dad for what he paid for it. And then the they got dis- decided that that was a straw purchase in the Supreme Court. So his dad wasn't prohibited. He wasn't prohibited. But his dad gave him the money for it, and then they admitted it. So it's like it's a fucking straw purchase. Here's the fucking problem: you admitted it. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's Shut what up. You always do. <laughs> well, how'd you end up with the gun? Oh, my son bought it. We went out shooting, and I was like, "Oh, that's a really cool gun." And he'd be like, "Oh, well, hell, Dad, I love you. I'll sell you the gun. I had no intent to do that when I first bought it, but shit, you know what? I'm gonna fucking sell it. To- like, get your fucking story straight." You stupid motherfuckers. Stop talking to the goddamn cops. Stop giving them information on how to string you the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Hey, you guys never heard of shut the fuck up Friday. Anytime <laughs> you talk to the cops, shut the fuck up. What happened yeah. today? I plead the fifth. How's your day, sir? I plead the fifth. Get fucked. Yeah. Not happening. Ab- Get fucked. Abramski versus United States. No prohibited person was involved. So I think Alan owes you $5. There you go. Oh, you guys can argue about it somewhere else. Yeah, we're done with this, right? Can we, can we read the reviews? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were we still in the middle of a review? I forget. We never even got. We got to the five, five. Squares. Oh yeah, five thumbs up. Jeremy. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. Come on. There we go. All right. Dookie duty. Ten squares. Uh, Putain clan. So many purdy mouths. So little time. I I don't know how I feel about that. I, mean, I appreciate that, that that you thinking my mouth is pretty, but I don't know anything past that point. I love WLS ten squares by Mister Jeff nine millimeter uh-huh. or so, nine mm. So, yeah, that's uh, really a shame. Good luck in <laughs> your next life. Jeremy, Nick, Aaron, and Savage are cool in that order of coolness, in exactly that order of coolness. Sean, <laughs> you're pretty cool too. For as old as you are, not bad for a show host with face aids. Wow. <laughs> He's not Wait. wrong. What really bothers me is he, he, he put Nick above me. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're the bottom, I think, is what he's trying to say. Uh, cringeworthy, two squares. Oh. By Bill B458. I don't know. What, what is that supposed to be? Maybe it's like Bill Ballsack Butthole. No, I meant the two squares. It's actually uh, one thumbs down. One thumbs down. Oh, one thumbs down. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, this, I, I literally, it looks like two squares. Uh, this show goes way beyond cringe. It's driven by a pompous, overweight know it all who thinks he amounts to something and his idiot <laughs> stooges that think they know almost as much about guns and the industry. First and last time I waste my time on this. Well, you can kill yourself, Bill. Bye, time? Felicia. Yeah. Oh, we're so hurt by your bad words, and you're never going to listen to us again. Oh, no, we I, ho- I hope you die in a fire while you're sucking dicks with your ass pussy. So this is what always cracks me up. It's like uh, when someone says they're, they're gonna they they don't want a fr- they're not gonna be your friend anymore on Facebook or whatever that they tell you. Like instead of just fucking walking away like an adult. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I, I want to tell you, I'm not going to listen to like we knew you yeah, were listening. That's why we place. stopped hanging out in sixth grade, Dylan, because I don't like you. It was just <laughs> polite by responding to your friend request. It doesn't make us actual friends. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I try to read into it and see, you know, I like, want to know what part we don't know about the industry or guns. I would like this person to challenge. I would like to, you know, all right, let's see who knows more about guns. I mean, I'll be the first to admit I don't know everything. There's a lot I don't know, but I, I don't know. I know some things. I don't I know. know. <laughs> I don't know everything. I know a fucking lot. 
Wait, am I a know-it-all? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you are you are a pompous know-it-all, but well, you are a pompous know-it-all. Am I a know-it-all though? Like well, I try. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's think, okay if know, we call you that, but not Aaron's somebody know else. Nothing. You're a know-it-all. Wait, do I present Savage myself? Savage is a commie, um, Nick's dead, and I'm an asshole. So do I present myself as knowing more than I actually do? Because I try very much not I to. I don't think so. No, I wouldn't say that. Because that's what a know it all is, right? That's someone who's like, oh, I know it all, even though you, I mean, you don't know. Sean's all. already got this imposter complex. So what Jeremy's saying is just Dude. driving him fucking nuts right now. No, <laughs> I, it's, I, it's, it's, it's like, it's not, it's not know it all. Like, like you just know one thing, but you pretend that like it's a thing that like, oh, I'm so special because I know this one thing about tires. Like, do you know they got stripes? Wait, are, are, you, are you saying that that's what I am or that's what no, I'm saying? That's what a know it all is. Okay. But yeah. like you're like yeah, everybody knows tigers have stripes, retard. Like yeah. it's not it's not <laughs> impressive. Like you can shut the fuck up. Like uh, you know. But did you know that tigers only kill uh blah blah blah? Shut the fuck up. Nobody cares. Like how many people? You know they kill a lot less. We just killed them all. But yeah, nobody ever wants to have that conversation. And uh, <laughs> it's just it's like why well, I, I know you know that was like or or you could have like actual in the breadth of knowledge on stuff i know some things uh let's see for the first word pompous affectedly and irritatingly <clears throat> grand solemn or self-important yeah I, I can see that that's fair <laughs> <laughs> but i like i don't want to be like that but i can understand why someone might feel like that <laughs> about me but overweight absolutely without question not even hey you got not, better though not even up for debate what are you yeah. at what are you at right now uh like 222 <laughs> She turned me into a newt. A newt. I got better. <laughs> uh, so def pompous, I can understand. Overweight. Yeah, know it all. That's not how I try to present myself, but I guess that's possible. I don't know. But after, even after all that, like, it's way worse that you guys would be a pompous, overweight, know-it-alls stooges. Like, what does that say about you guys? Awful. Awful. I mean, I, I can stooge. <laughs> I've, I've known whoa, 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 whoa. No, not that kind of stooge. You, you pay me, I'll stooge. I mean, I'm so like, uh, I like money. Dinner. Yeah, I love the idiot stooges that think they know almost as much about guns in the industry. Like Jeremy and Nick know more about guns than I ever will. Like ten. Man, nobody lets me on no fucking panels. <laughs> Those panels are about being pompous. They're not about knowing stuff. <laughs> fucking i don't know we yeah, need so. to have we need to have like um we need to have like a like a gun con or something or a podcast con uh for, for like like with panels and shit like wouldn't that be cool it would be we like really where could. we can have like a panel a day for like a week and like have like actual like live okay. talks with an audience like and it'd be like a big comic con and uh but for like gun stuff yeah like shot show be pretty fun it'd be like shot show but for the general public and less and I, less hoity-toity i think we should definitely do like a range thing and with that with like like a range thing where we have like a bunch of companies show up and then we allow the public to come in because like i wouldn't want to do it for just the industry i think that sucks oh god no yeah I mean, you want to meet everybody who listens to us, you know, that that's my favorite thing about NRA is like, I hate, I can't stand the NRA. I love the NRA AM because we get to hang out with our listeners. Like that's my favorite thing. That's why the RV is going to be so great because hopefully we'll be able to like meet tons of listeners uh, throughout the, throughout the world. But you know, meet them in dark alleys, uh, M -E -A -T, meet in them. The yeah. Uh, anyway, this, this one, I don't know. It got to me because like, I never want to be a know-it-all or pompous pisses me off. Plus like Savage said, I have like the biggest imposter syndrome ever. I constantly feel like a fucking fraud every single day of my life. Like never before have I, cause when I was in software and technology, like I was really good at it, but like in this world, I feel like an imposter every day. So this one definitely hit me hard. Whatever. I could see that. Yeah, fuck you, you dumb little bitch, Bill. I'll fight you. <laughs> but also, motherfucker, I will beat you like a shovel handle. 
fucking got me, bro. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> but do don't do that because then he wins, Sean. Nah, I sometimes do wonder why I even fucking bother. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that the Blackbeard from Mantis works on binary triggers. I did use it on one of those, and it was pretty awesome. It's so cool that it works on full auto too. Uh, it is a, it is a great project uh, product, but yeah, the the binary triggers, Franklin Armory, they they make the binary triggers. They said that they've been doing a ton of AR fifteen binary trigger sales recently, which gives me faith in all the people out there because they're out there buying them and having fun and dropping a lot of rounds. It also tells me that ammunition is coming back because if people are buying binary triggers, it's one of two things, one of three things: they want to have fun, they're prepping for the boog, or Ammo is coming down to a price that's actually kind of reasonable. I got so. 100 round boxes for 30 bucks a nine millimeter. Damn. That's all right. I get it. They're, they're remand, but haven't had a problem with them yet. Just as good. <laughs> FranklinArmory.com coupon code WLS10. Anyway, get involved locally, get involved politically. Uh, Bill B458 probably never got involved once in his whole pathetic little life. Well, there. Bill B458 probably uh, never had two gray cells bounce together. Gray cells? Your brain matter. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, he probably is used to like balls bouncing around. Means he's stupid. <laughs> I caught it. it Get involved, run for office, talk to your politicians, do all those things. Uh, do it. Sometimes FPC, GOA, and SAF do a lot of good. Uh, fundraising for FPC especially is super annoying to me, uh, but I don't want to take away everything just because that part is bad. Anyway, uh, do all those things. Suicide prevention line number is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. Or you can text a message to 741741. Uh, we're here live every week on Mondays and Wednesdays on demand every single day. Go to we like shooting.com slash show to subscribe. And remember, always prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. I changed it up. No, I still I, I kept it the same though. No. Yeah, no, I know I crank height. I'm doing the dangerous freedom shirt today. I love the shirt. Nice. I'm changing the the ending from now on. It's always going to be that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I'll still say pew 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 though. I, you can do whatever you want, really. It's America. I only wrote down <laughs> one show title, and it's Sugar Sick. I think that's perfect. That's yeah. good. Uh, shit. What is this? Yeah, all people, all three people that own one, own what? I missed it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, 45 gap. Oh, yeah. There you go. Nice. I mean, it's not shitty. It's just pointless.